Hello, everyone. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come listen to me. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Tonight, we're going to talk about getting started traded IPOs. Before we do that, there's the obligatory disclaimer screen. I could sum it up a little quicker by saying all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. It's kind of a long story about starting with the charts. And the, the short of it is I was with a British friend over in, um, in Italy late for a speaking engagement. And he asked me if I was ready for my presentation. And I said, I don't know, Rakesh, um, i got a lot to cover. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the charts. And he said, David, why not start with the charts? So from that day forward, I try to start every presentation with the charts. So just a little background information. I guess we have to describe um, or talk about what an, what an IPO is before we get started looking at the charts. So let's take a look at that and see if we get the pen to work here. Um, the way I define them is mostly stocks that have come public within the last 100 trading days. And in general, the sooner the better. There are some pioneer patterns that I'm going to touch upon tonight. I'm not going to get into a lot of details on those. We're going to focus mostly on first pullbacks, which is, I hate to use the word safe, but it's a little bit safer if you're getting started trading IPOs. Once you get the feel of it, these pioneer patterns are fantastic. And I'll touch upon those in a little while. Um, but even toddlers are relatively new issues or even issues of one or two years can offer some great opportunities. And I'm going to show you some of those that are set up here in just a couple of seconds. Now, let's get to the charts. There's a bull market in IPOs. The question is, are you missing it? So let's take a look at some of these charts in here. And I'm just going to whiz through here, whiz through these pretty quickly because we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff to cover tonight. And this one, we're actually long right now. And I'll show you the actual setup. And it's actually set up again going into tomorrow. And you can see a lot of these stocks, these current and not so current IPOs have gone straight up as of late. So if that doesn't give you get you excited, I'm not sure what will. Let's look at a few more. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm, something's wrong here. Hang on. Wait a minute. I I thought I said there was a bull market. Well, what's going on here? Hang on. Oh my goodness. Look at that one. And yet another one. Well, I didn't look too bullish. Well, the bad news is that they all won't go up. But I have some good news, and it's not about my car insurance. The good news is that many have one simple pattern that will keep you out of trouble. Before I show you that, let's uh, talk about Mr. Will Rogers. Will Rogers once said, buy stocks that go up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. Now, he was being a little facetious by saying that, but Will was right, at least when it comes to IPOs. And my theory, and I actually put it into practice, is that you could buy the ones that go up, and if they don't go up, don't buy them. Now, to those of you who know me, you're probably sick of the sardine story, so maybe now might be a good time to go grab a soft drink or something or a glass of water. But uh, let me just breeze through this really quick. Years ago, there was a, and by the way, this domain's not quite active yet. I'm waiting for the DNS service to update, but it's going to just point you back to um, to my website or the IPO page, one or the other. But anyway, there's an age-old story about trading, and sardine prices were going through the roof. So these people were trading these sardine tins, and one guy who bought right about the top of the market decided that instead of trading his sardines, selling it to a grade of fool, so to speak. He was going to open up a sardines and have himself a good little lunch, a good expensive little lunch, that is. So he got his crackers out, he opened up the sardines, and they were just rotten. And he said, oh, my goodness, let me find that son of a gun that sold me these. So he tracked them down, and he said, silly fool, those sardines are for trading, not eating. So we're going to be trading IPOs. That doesn't mean that we can't stick with them for a long, long time. Some of the ones I'm going to show you tonight, we've been in for months, okay? But you want to stick with them as long as you can and let a trailing stop take you out. You also want to take some partial profits 
along the way. We've got a lot to cover tonight, so we're not going to be able to get into money management. But a lot of the money management from the core methodology is also used into in the uh, trading of the IPOs, and I cover that in the course. So don't don't eat me, trade me. So and be willing to, when the time comes, say so long and thanks for all the fish. So if you catch a nice little trend and the trend begins the end, you got a little trailing stop takes you out, and you started here and you ended up here, and you made a nice little profit, and you took a little partial profit along the way. All the things that I preach in the week of charts every week, or nearly every week, then uh, be happy. Now, let me show you this simple little pattern here. And this, and I built a, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit on this in a second, but I've got a pioneer pattern that's built just off of this, and it was so simple, I couldn't believe it actually worked. And I actually started trading it, and I was embarrassed to actually show it to my people. And I, I said, well, I'm, you know, it's working and I'm trading it. And I, I tell everyone everything I do is fully disclosed. So I decided to put it into my stock selection course in the IPO section of that. And when I did that, uh, I got a, an email from a client when I was putting together this IPO course. And like, you know, I went back and rewatched that stock selection webinar. I took that little pattern out and I'm now I'm up tremendously and a couple of these IPOs, and, and she wanted to thank me for that. And that's that uh, testimonial you'll see on my site. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, and I discovered this quite a while ago, but I just only in the last several years developed some patterns to actually trade off these early, early IPOs. One thing that's really interesting is usually significant high slash low is often set during the first week of trading. Go in uh, when you get done with this webinar and go in and look at all these IPOs. Go back in history if you want. Uh, initially, I did some research going back 20 years or so, and I was just amazed at how many IPOs the opening range was set in the first week of trading. So all those stinkers I just showed you, every single, every single one of those could have been avoided by letting them trade for one week and then seeing if they go up or see if they go down. If you don't take anything away from this webinar tonight, except this one point, I think you just paid for your webinar, okay? This is very, very important. So give them one week, that's five trading days, one, two, three, four, five, to establish themselves and then see which way they go. Now tonight we're gonna to talk about, if they start going higher, we're gonna to look to trade the first pullback. We're not gonna to try to trade any pioneer patterns tonight, or I'm not gonna to try to show you that tonight. And that's all in the course. But first pullbacks are still a wonderful pattern. In fact, if you're just getting started trading them, I would highly recommend that you do trade the first pullbacks. I'm a big fan of symbolism. As I was putting this webinar together, I actually bought the domain, tradesardines.com. Uh, I have this street sign on the wall in my office. I'm looking at it right now. And the symbolism kind of reminds me that, hey, we are trading stocks, okay? We're not falling in love with them. We're not studying the fundamentals and, and we're not like advocates of what the company is doing. We might like the company or like what they're doing, but the bottom line is we are trading stocks. Now, you could take fundamental analysis and you could take any fundamental analysis in the world and you cannot prove to me or no one can prove to anyone that there's one concrete thing you could do with fundamental analysis that would guarantee you catch a trend in stocks. The beauty of technical analysis is there's one concrete rule, and this is why technical analysis works. And by the way, I often preach this. If you're plotting that 15th oscillator or trying to do something a little bit more arcane, you might just want to come back to the chart and see if it's going up or down. And remember this. If a market is going to go to C and it's at A and B is in between A and C, it's going to have to go through B along the way. And this is one of my pioneer patterns. I call it just simply buy at B. So if market's at $5, it's got to pass through 10 on its way to 20. Okay. Now, if you're trading a regular stock or an established issue, you can't just buy it when it makes a new high. Although if you did it often enough in a portfolio, you would actually be profitable longer term, provided you had some sort of money management plan in place. But with IPOs, because they don't have bad memories and people looking to get off the hook, at least people who bought it prior, then a lot of times 
you can catch some really good trends by simply buying those first little breakouts. Now, there's about seven patterns or eight patterns that I cover, major patterns when it comes to IPOs. One of the most common ones is what I call a big picture pattern number two. And I want to talk about that tonight. This is going to be your bread and butter when it comes to IPOs. It's what I call the fly and the die. Now, this is a big picture pattern. This might take weeks or months to unfold, but many IPOs will just take off and then they'll just absolutely die. Now, you might have figured it out already. The number one bigger picture pattern, and they're just a list, just, I just have them listed, uh, would be just a die and die, which I showed you earlier. They established their high in the first week of trading, and they just absolutely implode. So you want to totally avoid those. But this fly and die can be a wonderful thing, and this could be your bread and butter when it comes to IPOs. Now, again, we're not going to take the pioneer pattern here, but we're going to look for second entries tonight, a little pullback along the way. And then you trail a stop higher, and then it begins to sell off. What do you do? Well, again, so long, and thanks for all the fish. So this is one that I recommended when I did the IPO course. It was a they had a little IPO breakout pattern back here, but it did make a nice little what I call a secondary entry here. Notice that it took off, it made a nice trend higher, and then it pulled back. So your entry in the first pullback would be right here. We'll talk about that in a few minutes in a little bit more detail. But you can see that it did take off initially. If you had a trailing stop, you probably got stopped out somewhere around here. And then it came back in. So what? You made money on the trade. And again, during this fly phase, you could make a lot of money. In fact, this would trigger back here on a breakout pattern. And then it went up over 100%. So it was a decent trade before it stopped out. Here's another example of one. You can see it's had a pretty good run in here. It pretty much doubled. And then it came back in. So if you're trading these, what you want to do is you want to trail that stop higher. You want to take some partial profits along the way and be willing to get stopped out on the remainder. I did a presentation last week, and you can get it on YouTube, uh, about how you're going to have to give up some profits. So, yeah, it would be pretty nice if you got back here on this first pullback at 20 and you cashed out at 50 bucks a share. Well, let me tell you something. Nobody's going to – Ring a bell when a market tops. So that's a, a whole blog I wrote a few days ago about that in, in a while back. You can do a search on my website for that one. Anyway, and the other thing, too, is keep in mind that buy at B. Let's say this market's going to go to 100 or this stock, whatever you want to call it. It's going to have to pass through 50 along the way. Now, it just so happens in this case, 50 was the top, but you don't know that. So you just trail a stop higher. You get stopped out. You get stopped out. So what? You made money. Be happy, okay? And here's one. It's, this one's a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, uh, compressed in the cycle. Notice it made a nice little pullback here, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. It shot higher. So you got this fantastic swing trade out of this. You got your partial profits out. And then it comes right back in, stops you out. Well, so what? You make a lot of money over three or four days. So what? That's a good thing, right? Now, let's talk about what happens with this pattern, this bigger picture pattern. Your price goes up, and sometimes it's a little bit more spiky than this, but it just kind of rolls over, okay? So what happens is when they come out, there's usually some enthusiasm. And as we'll talk about in just one second, the people back here are doing some things to make it happen, to make it work, okay? I'm going to stop short of saying manipulation because I don't want somebody coming after me, but... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, okay? So that enthusiasm all of a sudden begins to wane, and there could be a little bit of lead and lag, and it's kind of hard to measure something like enthusiasm, but it is good to understand what's happening so you can wrap your head around it. And in this case, the reality, it's its a reality that's not a good reality. It's bad, okay? they are gonna This company has, uh, I don't know, they, they make uh, some kind of chips for the solar industry, and everybody thinks, okay, then we're going to have all solar power from now on. These chips are cheap. These chips are great. But then the reality begins to set in like, well, maybe they're not so great. But so what? Again, this is going to be one of your most common patterns, the fly and the die. So here's your price going up, the fly phase, and then the price going down the die phase. And as long as you've got a trailing stop in there, and as long as you're taking partial profits along the way, so what? Now, you can tell I'm really pushing the money management tonight. It's a shame we don't have more time 
because that's one of the biggest things that, I, that I, I'll preach to the course is the importance of money management. The ultimate goal would be to catch the fly and the fly. In other words, an IPO that just goes up and up and up and up and up. Maybe that trill we just talked about a little while ago will do that for us. And then next year, when I come back and maybe redo this webinar, we'll use that as an example. But we've got to stop in place just in case. So again, the the trill, I'm sorry, the, um, the fly and die, hopefully trill doesn't die, hopefully it just flies, but the fly and die is the most common tradable pattern. Now you're going to have several setups that could occur during that first fly phase. You're going to have what I call some pioneer setups. There's two, three, four, there's four pioneer setups that could set up very early on during that fly phase. So you got three or four, or what did I just say? Five patterns back here that set up. And then you're gonna have like first pullback. And then there's several other patterns that will set up along the way. So there's plenty enough time, often plenty enough time to get in for that first phase. And again, this is gonna be the most common pattern. I mean, next to the die and die. So a lot of them are just gonna die. And that's okay. We're just gonna avoid those and not worry about them. But of the ones that do take off, we don't know if they're going to die eventually, so again, not to beat the dead horse, we're going to use a little money management. And there's some pioneer patterns to get it here. There's a first pullback pattern here, and there's some other pullback patterns to get it even later. Now, the wild enthusiasm, like I said earlier, when IPOs are brand new, there's this wild enthusiasm about them before that bad reality begins to set in. Now, every night in reality sets in, it is good. And again, that's what I call the fly and the fly. But more often than not, if they don't die, again, they take off and then they eventually come back in. Now, trade, again, is the key word in this sentence. And these are truly sardines. Now, we've been in one for months. We've been in two or three for months, now that I think about it. So we're hanging on. And like Coval says, you got that bunky, uh, bucking bronco, he tried to say. You're trying to hold on to that trend. And it could get a little rough and bumpy in there. But as long as you're taking profits, trailing those stops, it's great. And again, beat the dead horse, speaking of horse analogies, money management is key. So the goal is to still always position yourself for a longer term trade, but take a short term mentality going into the trade. This is just exactly like the core methodology. And once again, the fly part, okay, could be substantial. I've seen moves of 100 and 200 percent in that first little fly part now here's some ground rules we're not going to concern ourselves too much with what happens before in fact we're not going to concern ourselves at all what happens before public offering okay now i'm going to tell you a few things that happened just so you build the background and in the course i went into a lot more details about that because i think it's good to understand what's happening but the bottom line is the market is the final arbiter or the ultimate arbiter when it comes to trading ipo so we're going to wait one week but Dave, what if they go straight up the first week? Well, you have to decide whether or not you're going to leave them alone or maybe trade that first pullback, which we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. OK, so don't worry about trying to get them here, which I'll talk a little bit about in a second. And don't worry about trying to trade it for a week because I don't want to flip back in the slides and lose my place. But you saw what happens with a lot of these things. They just flat out implode. And that implosion begins often with the first week of trading. Now, tonight when I put these slides together, I had so many ground rules that I had to just reduce it down to try to get it within the uh, a lot of time here. So I just want to throw, throw out a couple of these ground rules. Again, the holding time is as long as possible. And to make a little um, joke here, it's like at least until it begins to, to smell. And that means that the stop is hit on a reality check. Let's say you're in an issue like this, and you're trailing a stop higher. And then the reality begins to set begins to set in. I was looking at one a few minutes ago. I forget which one it was. And it was pretty cool because it stopped out on the trailing stop. And then the like, last couple of days, it absolutely kept imploding. And then it just absolutely gapped way down. But that little trailing stop would have, would have caught the majority of that trend. And that's just such a beautiful thing. Big fan of money management and position management. That's when you really learn how to trade when you start studying these things, the money management and position management. Okay, now I have my core methodology, which is based on pullbacks. And that's where some of the examples I'm going to show you tonight came from my core trading service. Okay, so I'm going to bend the rules a little bit on the core service or the core methodology, I should say. 
And there's a little bit of venturing outside of the methodology, such as these pioneer breakout patterns. But for the most part, we are going to follow the core methodology. But we're going to bend the rules a little bit here and there. There's not enough detail, not enough time to get into all the details, but just a few things like we will be looking for some breakout characteristics, which we do not look for in the core methodology, trading stocks, trading established stocks with the methodology that I outlined in my books and I talk about every week in the week of charts. OK, so we will bend those rules a little bit. Maybe we'll give pullbacks an extra few days. Maybe we'll on the first pullback. We might let it pull back a little bit more. We won't wait for it to pull back deeply like we normally do, and we might trade more of a shallow, shallow pullback. And again, maybe trade a pullback with more than, let's say, eight or nine or ten days in the IPO. So we're a little bit more lenient because these stocks have a lot more potential and a lot less bad memories. Okay. Now, remember, the, the full course is called Capitalizing on the Promise of the future again we're trading these things and every now and then we catch one and it goes to the moon but for the most most of the time we catch one we get a nice little trend and we get out when that trend ends okay now there's no pesky fundamentals to mess with if you're trading a more established company and they've got a bunch of analysts and a bunch of uh, quantifiable fundamentals then that stock can be quite choppy or as i like to call them efficient okay and I did spend a lot of time talking about efficiency versus inefficiency. It's a very important concept to wrap your head around. If you don't get the course, do watch my YouTubes where I talk about efficiency and inefficiency. That's a very important concept. IPOs are incredibly inefficient, meaning, meaning they can go up 100 or 200 percent or more. Okay, or inefficiency works both ways. They can drop 50 to 100 percent. Okay, a lot of them just come public and then implode from that point forward. Now, remember that a euphoria is a bigger motivator than reality, okay? So again, the promise of the future is a lot more exciting most of the time than the reality. Every now and then you hit it right, and the promise equals the reality, or the reality is even better, okay? But nine out of 10 times, the promise is a lot more exciting than the reality, okay? Now, there are people with a vested interest wanting the IPO to succeed. Did I say manipulation? Of course not. Okay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay. Just know that there are the people who are on the hook, which I'll show you in just one second, with the IPO or looking to get off the hook and they're looking to make money. And the only way for that to happen is for that IPO to go up. Okay. So did I say manipulation? No, of course not. I would never say that they are manipulated. No, I can't say that, okay? Now, here's the beauty. Again, they trade purely on emotions, which makes it a chart reader's absolute dream. And again, they're inefficient. Now, you do have a quiet period that reduces noise. And again, this is something I just want to kind of touch upon tonight. And I went into a lot more details of the course. But the quiet period means that they can't come out and release news on the company, okay, for X amount of days. It might be 90 days, it might be 180 days. It, it depends. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about how many days it is. Just know that they have quiet periods and just watch the charts to see what happens. And guess what? Okay. Now, I'm not saying manipulation, but I'm willing to bet you that that first report is going to be a positive one on the company that the company releases. And guess what? I bet that report was written three months ago. So they're always going to have a, well, not always, nothing's always in this game, but I'd be willing to bet that almost always their first report is just an unbelievable, unbelievable positive report. Now, they all have a story to sell, and it's the promise of the future. They're going to cure a hard disease. They're going to solve the world's energy crisis. And, you know, it could be a, lo a less lofty goal like making good burritos or making comfortable exercise clothes for guys like Big Dave, that's me, who eat too many burritos, okay? Um, Lululemon, I remember it set up once about uh, five years ago, and they make yoga clothes. And I laughed at them because they make yoga clothes. And then I watched it go up in horror over the next three or four days. It went up about 40 or 50%. If you pull it up on your charts and look back in time, you should be able to find that move. It was a beautiful setup. 
just a simple little pullback setup like we talked about tonight. And I laughed it off and actually made fun of them because they made yoga clothes. Well, no more, okay? If they go up and they look good, I'm going to buy them. I'm not going to worry about whether they make yoga clothes or not. Now, it is a good idea to make sure they have some kind of story behind them. As I said, of course, what's the story, fad, or glory? So as a general statement, you want to make sure they do have a little bit of a story behind them in addition to that setup. But your setup is first and foremost. If you like the setup, then you take it. And again, the market is the final arbiter. Don't worry about before public offering too much, okay? If you understand what the player's motives are ahead of time, that will help you. But the bottom line is look for the chart patterns and trade the patterns. And don't confuse the issue with facts. Again, the market is the final arbiter. This company might, you might think the company is great, but if the market doesn't like it, then you should avoid it. So as I'm kind of hitting around, anything before the public offering is really academic at best, okay? It doesn't hurt to learn about these things, and I did spend a considerable amount of time talking about them, but the bottom line is we have to live in reality. We want to wait at least one week, okay? And then we see what happens over here, and then we look to get long these IPOs. By the way, I don't want to get sidetracked too far, but the beauty, one of the beauties of IPOs is, let's say you're not a very good market timer. Well, if you're trading IPOs, the underwriters are going to time that market for you. In other words, when conditions are good, you're going to see a lot of IPOs coming out. When conditions are bad, you won't see any. 2009, I don't remember many IPOs, or 2008, I should say, when the market was headed straight down. You'd be stupid to take your company public at that point in time. So they actually do some market timing for you. So that's another one of the many advantages of trading IPOs. Now, the people that are uh, the insiders, they're company people. They're looking to get hold, okay, hold, I should say. They're looking to make some money off the deal. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bringing a company public. You do have some fortunate, and I use this as, it in quotes, insiders looking to make a quick buck. These people, I have a friend of mine, I think he sold it, but at one point he had a brokerage, and he gets every hot issue there is before it comes public. And I'm like, wow, I can't believe you got that. Yeah, Dave, but you got to realize I get a lot of crap too. So forget about trying to get issues before they go public because guess what? They're going to put a bunch of crap on your account if you let them. You're going to have to be forced to buy a bunch of them to get those one or two gems that occur every now and then. As a private trader, you actually have an advantage. You just wait to see if they go up, set up, and then take the patterns. Also, these insiders are encouraged not to flip. So their hands are kind of held. If they get, if they get to, to some IPOs that start dying like that and they're losing money, they start throwing them out and flipping them then they're less likely to get the next good IPO. Now, this is kind of an academic talk because most of us here don't uh, didn't just sell our brokerage firm for $100 million and we're not getting all these IPOs. But the reason I'm saying is we do have some wealthy individuals among us that are offered IPOs quite often. So if you want to start playing that before the market game, that BPO game, um, God bless you. Good luck with that because you're going you're gonna to have to eat a lot of bad issues if you're going to do that. So the point, the reason I'm making the point so strongly about this is because just watch the market and see what actually happens and then look to trade them is what I'm trying to say. Now, there is a lockup period where insiders are kind of handcuffed. And the, one of the, the patterns is what I call the fly die fly. The market does have a deep correction. And there's actually some tradable patterns within that correction, which we won't have time to get into tonight. So but there is a lockup period that does, again, explain this deep correction that occurs at MIDI of these IPOs. A lot of them, instead of the flying in, in the die, the flying to die, they actually recover and then take off. And then this could be the mother of all trends. And this could also offer some really nice secondary signals. Okay. Now, again, uh, some assumptions that the underwriter will support the issue and insiders have a vested interest. Okay. Now, again, there's some, there's some people that, or in the BPO phase, okay, like I said, the lucky people, the fortunate people I mentioned earlier, you might have some employees, you might have some VCs, some venture capitalists, okay, and then obviously management. So there is some supply out there, but it's not like a stock where, let's say a stock trades at, let's say, between $20 and $30 a share, and it drops down to about 10 bucks a share, rallies up to about 50 and you see a little setup here. 
Well, you'd be foolish to take that because anybody who bought during this consolidation is going to look to get hold. The great thing about IPOs is there is no there is no overhead supply back here. There are some people that are looking to get hold, but these people are tied up. Okay, and here's the beauty of it: if the IPO does go higher, okay, these people will not be as inclined to sell. Greed will set in, and they'll hang on. Okay. Now the question is. Is trading IPOs riskier? And the answer is, well, yeah, but the reward often outweighs the risk. And this is the Chinese symbol for opportunity, which is also the same symbol for danger. Now, there's some controversy over this, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, as a general statement, uh, supposedly this symbol is both opportunity and danger. And, you know, insert your favorite uh, Quote about taking risk. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. Uh, who's the happier man? He who has braved the storm of life and lived, or he has stayed on shore and merely existed. And, you know, this is probably my favorite one here. The only thing standing between you and your goal is the bullshit story as to why you can't achieve it. And that's Jordan Belfort. Okay. So we're paid to put capital into harm's way. And a lot of times we are rewarded very well for doing this. Now, how do you trade them? Well, first pullbacks we'll talk a little bit more about tonight. And again, there's quite a few things that are a little bit outside of the core methodology. And a lot of these are, again, pioneer patterns where you get a good cut early. Now, I'm also going to talk a little bit about toddler patterns. And these are new issues that have been out for, let's say, uh, six months, eight months, maybe even a year or two. And there's some really good patterns that you could trade in those. Not as great all the time as these brand new IPOs, which all is ex it's the excitement, he tried to say, but still tradable nonetheless. Okay. Now, if you're interested in the course, let me just show you this page real quick and we'll get back into the uh, information. Trade IPO course, it's uh, you go to shop on my website which is in the top menu, or you can go directly there, davelander.com, trade IPOs. And then maybe tomorrow when the domain service update, uh, you can go to um, tradesardines.com and get in there. Oh, by the way, just for tonight, and this is good for 24 hours, this promo code, if you put in all lowercase, IPO107, you get $107 off. Okay, just for tonight. Uh, actually, just for 24 hours, I should say. And then you could also uh, do it in payments and select that here. It's a little bit more expensive in payments, and that's to encourage everybody to just get the course. Now, let's talk about first pullbacks. You're basically looking for a trend. It should be an obvious trend. Notice that I draw a big blue arrow. To those of you who don't know me, I've kind of become famous for those blue arrows and I've actually been told where to stick them. And that's a that's a story that maybe we could talk about over a beer someday. But uh, that's earned me a um, not so flattering nickname in the industry. Now, let's take a look at Trill, which is one that we're actually still long in the portfolio. We had a first um, what, what, what do I want to call this? a pioneer signal back here but again if you're new to trading and I cover these pioneer server uh, signals quite a bit in the uh, in setups in the uh, in the course but if you're a little newer to trading them trading them then wait to see if you get a decent rally and if you do let them pull back and then look to enter when that pullback when it begins to rally out of that pullback if you go to my website I've got a 21 page report on the core methodology. If you read that, you're going to get the money management, you're going to get the pullback methodology, and you can apply that with first pullbacks when it comes to IPO. So get that free report. It's on the store page if you go to my website. Now, here's another example. And, and the beauty of this one is notice that it's kind of persistently moving higher into here, and then it began to accelerate higher. So, again, you should be able to draw a big arrow on the chart, and then you look to trade that first little pullback in here when it begins to rally out of that pullback. Wonderful, wonderful pattern to trade. The question is, is trading IPOs hard? And the answer is no. In my best Bella voice, you can do it. And one thing I was thinking about 
as I was putting this presentation together earlier today is that I'd be willing to bet that I could teach a 10 year old my favorite pioneer pattern. It's that simple. Like I said earlier, I was almost embarrassed to show it to people because of such a simple little pattern and so easy to recognize yet that one little pattern you would have avoided every losing trade I showed so far and you would have captured every winning trade that I showed so far. Okay. Now, do they always work? No. And that's why we use money management. That's why we take partial profits along the way. But right now, and this bull market has lasted two or three years. It's been since 2012, 2013. These IPOs have been absolutely on fire. The beauty about what's going on right now is that there's this big demarcation happening in the IPOs. You've got some of them that are going straight up, and you've got some of them are going straight down. Okay. It's a little bit more obvious who the bad guys are and who the good guys are right now. So, again, I think you could do it. I'd, um, I'd be willing to bet, I, again, I could teach a 10 year old uh, this simple pattern that I like so much. Now, the question is, how do you find IPOs? Well, uh, Martin is not a show. Uh, that's the next subject I want to talk about. You use a, a software trick to find new issues. And I just have a simple little formula, which I'll give you. It's just like close minus a moving average. That's all it is. And it works with TC. I don't know if it works with other um, software. But if you have telecharts, I'll give you this setup. And also, what I'll do tomorrow is when I mail out this recording, I'll put together a list of IPOs for you. And I'll also make a list of everyone we talked uh, about. So you use a little trick, again, to find your IPO list. And you could use 100 days. You could use 200 days if you want. I keep mine fairly liberal. I've probably got about 300 days in my IPO database. And if you want that whole database, I'll give you the whole database. Uh, but if you want a little smaller database, we could do 100 days, and I'll be happy to give you that. Uh, anyway, again, let them establish themselves for at least one week. So what else is in the course? Well, I started listing everything, and I had about three pages of stuff. It's eight hours total. It's four hours of intensive trading, and then it's four hours of follow-up training. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one extra hour of live training. So we're going to take a look at the IPOs we talk about tonight that are set up, and we're going to see what worked. We're going to see what didn't. We'll talk about the money management, and then we'll go out and we'll try to find some new opportunities. And if you go in and watch the IPO course, you're going to see those four hours were spread over uh, some weeks to months later. What we did was we went in, we found some opportunities, and then – we played those opportunities and see how they shake out. Some of them worked tremendously. Some of them didn't work at all. And, so, and most of them, or quite a few of them, I should say, did not even trigger. So it was really great, wonderful exercise. If you know me, what I like to do is I like to teach the theory, and then I like to show it in practice. So we're going to look at some live examples right now. And again, hopefully a year from now, I'll come back and say, hey, remember did that IPO webinar? Look at this bad boy. It's going up 200%. Can't guarantee that. But we'll see. And at least by using live examples, we'll see how it happens. Um, so what else? Well, first of all, why you as a private trader have the advantage over the big boys. And I can go into that into a lot of details. Uh, some more of these toddler patterns, which I'm going to show you in just one second. Uh, why you need to understand, fully understand, market efficiency. Okay. Uh, some bigger picture patterns. Like I said, there's six more or actually five more that we talked about tonight. So you can understand what's really happening in these markets, uh, setup, setup, setups. I have, uh, like I said, several more pioneer setups, several more pullback type of setups, a, a retracement type of setup. There's a lot more setups than what I'm showing you tonight. But again, if all you did was trace those full, trade those first pullbacks, I think you do fairly well with these. Uh, more background, pretty much everything I talked about or touched upon tonight. It's going to be a lot more details. If you like this, if you like this presentation tonight, you're going to love the course. If you don't like this presentation, then you're not going to like the course. It's just that simple. Uh, again, money money position management is is important. Uh, I'll do a follow up webinar. We'll see what actually worked in real time, and then we'll find some more setups in that seminar. And then again, some exact ways. Now, I'm not a mechanical trader. What I do has a little bit of discretion to it, but with some of these pioneer patterns, they are mechanical ways to trade them. And a lot of people want to see that mechanical thing. And I'm going to show you that in the course. And then there's some more secondary patterns to trade. Um, I'm running out of, uh, <laughs> I'm running out of air listening to everything that's in it. But anyway, it's all in there. 
And then there's six pitfalls, at least six that I counted today, that will avoid to uh, keep you out of some lame IPOs. Um, trading psychology, something I touched upon quite a bit. Okay, if you've got the right mentality to trade them, again, and that's why I wanted to bring up that sardine thing, okay, that we're trading them, right? And that's why I talk a lot about psychology in there. Uh, a lot of these things are lower volume, so you can have to make some decisions on that. Uh, again, not enough time to get into it tonight, but we talked a lot about that. And you could actually trade some lower pro uh, volume stocks as a private trader, just so long you realize that you are trading something that could be a little bit more uh, speculative. But again, it goes back to that risk thing. With risk comes reward. And then sometimes there's some sectors that you should be trading when it comes to your IPOs, and sometimes there's some you should avoid. Okay, and again, um, you will get instant access. I just put in a new system which uh, has video deliveries. Uh, the second you click enter, you will get access to the entire course, and uh, that's right here. Also, by the way, lifetime unlimited support on any course that I do. So five years from now, if you're seeing an IPO setting up, you say, Dave, what do you think? We'll talk about it. Now, keep in mind, I might say, go back and rewatch the course. That's not a real setup. Or, yeah, it looks fantastic. That's a, We talked about that in the course. So you might have to do a little homework. Now, that doesn't mean uh, I want you to call me up and say, hey, what if let's build a trading system together. That's a different type of, of support. But as far as IPOs are concerned, if you have if you ever have any question on IPO after you get the course or if you have any question about the course, I will give you unlimited lifetime support. So, again, daylander.com, trade IPOs is the website. And the code is IPO, all lowercase, 107. And that's a, that'll give you $107 off tonight. Now, again, let's talk about this in practice. Okay, we just talked about a lot of theory. So show me the next big winner. Well, this one caught my eye tonight. And you've got some way back here, you've got some early entry patterns, which so far really hadn't panned out. Well, at least up until now. But now you've got this stock taken off, and then it's pulled back. If you want to write it down, the symbol is CNXR, and I'll put it in tomorrow's uh, email with the recording. Yes, they are being recorded, and I will send it out with the recording. Tan H, here's another one. Uh, take it off very nicely in here, and it's since pulled back. You see how easy these patterns are to recognize? So that's your first pullback there. So write that symbol down. Possible setup going into tomorrow. Now, like I said earlier, Toddlers or IPOs that have been on the market for a while can offer some wonderful opportunities. Now, again, I like to trade the IPOs early on, way back here, but what if they die out like this one did, okay? Now, this is a fracking company, which obviously is energy. And what has energy done since last November, December, whenever? Energy is absolutely imploded. So they brought this company public at the worst absolute time. But look what's happened since then, which is kind of fascinating. Now, again, this is a toddler. This isn't the, the IPO. This isn't quite as exciting as the IPO is coming out. But even after they've been on the market a while, they still could be fairly interesting. So notice we make a nice little double bottom in here. We also make a nice little cup and handle. And it pulls back a little bit. And those who are keeping score, it's also a pattern I call a bow tie. If you do a Google or a YouTube, I should say, do a search on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of information on bow ties. So if you watch for bow ties and first thrust and these other bottoming patterns on these IPOs, don't try to buy them down here, okay? You don't want to try to catch a falling knife. Let them bounce and then let them set up and let them pull back and then look to trade them. So this is FMSA going into tomorrow. OK, and this one, that's my gut feel, but I think this one could go back up, uh, could probably double from here and can go back up to where it started. But we'll see. Uh, again, here's one that's just kind of more of a generic pullback, but nice little persistent move higher. Uh, look for persistent pullbacks on my YouTube channel or on my website. Got a lot of uh, articles on that. And in Traders Magazine, I have some articles, too. So if you have if you have any trouble finding any of these resources, I answer all my own emails. Dave at DaveLandry.com, and I'll help you find it. But you see, nice little pullback. Again, this is a toddler pattern, 
But it's still a relatively new issue. It's been public less than a year, so there's still a lot of excitement going on. In fact, when they do last this long, it's possible that there is some reality and not just a promise of reality. Now, this one, again, this is another energy company. And you might have to squint your eyes for this, but look, one, two, three, four, five days, okay? That's the absolute high for this issue. Again, I'm just amazed at how many times this happens. If you don't walk away with anything tonight, just know that many times IPOs make this significant high or significant low on the first week of trading. And then what happens? It dies. Well, guess what happened? This is another energy company they brought public at the worst possible time. Back here, they were probably thinking, oh, wow, this is a great time to bring a company public. And then what happened, of course, energy crashed afterwards. Now, it's kind of hard to see the setup. You kind of have to squint your eyes. And this is what I call baby come back. And then those who are familiar with the core methodology, I'll have to talk about the Phoenix stocks. And these are stocks that go down to low levels, bottom out, and then set up as something like a bow tie, a first thrust. And also, you'll get like a cup and handle also will happen there. And so let's zoom in, zoom in a little bit on this pattern. And if you zoom in, you can see you've got a nice thrust higher. And then you got to pull back. And if you plot your moving averages like I just did earlier, you also have a bow tie. So these bottoming patterns can be pretty good, even in, these, in what I call these toddler stocks. Okay, a couple of takeaways from tonight. And uh, what was that? That was a uh, SSE. So that's another one that's set up. So write that down going into tomorrow. Ah, uh, takeaways. There's a bull market in IPOs. Do not trade them before they come public. Do not try to get the issue. Don't even bother, okay? Do buy the fly, meaning buy them when they go up, and avoid them if they go down. So only buy them if they go up. If you miss the pioneer patterns, which I didn't give you those exact patterns tonight, but I think that you kind of have an idea how they work, okay? I go into a lot more deal, a lot more detail, obviously, in the course. But if you did miss that, first pullbacks would be a great place to enter. And if you're just getting started, start by trading first pullback and then learn and watch some of these pioneer patterns until you wrap your head around them. Um, if you're using the core methodology, then pay attention to toddlers, okay? Like I said, I keep about 300 days of my database of IPOs so I could see those toddlers, those stocks that have been public for about a year or so, and sometimes even two years or so, they still could be worthwhile. Now, the biggest opportunities and the most opportunities are going to be it does brand new IPOs. And again, there's a bull market at IPOs, so don't miss it. But these stocks have been established for a little while, can still offer some wonderful opportunities. And again, if you love what you heard tonight, if you like what you heard tonight, you're going to love the course. And that, uh, I promise, 100% uh, money back guarantee, by the way. So um, I've never had, a, I've had one course returned in my entire career. And it was because it, I knew the guy was going to return it anyway ahead of time. He sent me like 10 emails asking me about return policy. And uh, it's a, I said, this guy's going to gonna log on. He's going to download the course. And an hour later, he's going to return it. And you know what? He did. So what? So that's one guy. I've only had, I mean, that's a pretty amazing track record, okay? Since I've been running DaveLander.com, I've only had one return on a course. So I think it's worth it to open, offer 100% money back guarantee and again though if you don't like what you hear tonight you're not gonna like the course if you like what you hear tonight you'll love the course okay so check your email tomorrow you're gonna get a list of ipos i'll remind you of that promo code in fact we'll do that um in just uh one second here there it is okay there's a promo code it's ipo 107 we'll go ahead and open it up for uh questions now okay Will you also get over waiting or not for an IPO to become optionable for protection? Thanks. Okay, Fernando, uh, Fernando, I'm not a big fan of trying to use options for hedging, but yes, anything in the course that involves these established issues, once they become a little bit more established, the secondary patterns, such as first deep retracement, these pullbacks, um, and some of these other patterns, and then of course these toddler patterns, Yes, those once the IPO is optional, you can apply some option strategy if you wanted to. I'm not a big fan of hedging. Uh, not enough time to get into it tonight, but hedging is expensive. And if your hedge works, it means that you lost money in the, the trade. So it's like it kind of balances out. And if your hedge doesn't work, it means you made money to trade, but you lost money in the hedge. And then again, it kind of balances out. So 
I believe in playing position moves, and that's where the real money is. Like the aforementioned IPO that's up 100%, or at least was up 100%. Uh, that's the kind of move we're going for, hopefully 200, 300, or even more percent. Obviously, it doesn't happen on every trade, but it does happen often enough to make trading them worthwhile, okay? Uh, what would you? Well, it's, that's going to be a long-winded answer on that. What would you consider as the lowest daily volume for an IPO to trade? Well, like I said, we went into a lot of detail on volume in the main course. I don't want to tease you too much about that. Uh, if it's trading over 100,000 shares on, on certain days, and if you get a million every now and then, uh, then it's probably okay. The one thing I went into a lot of detail of the course is there's a bit of a hidden volume in IPOs. If you're trading an established issue, you want to see two to 300,000 shares on average and maybe even a little bit more before you trade them. As a private trader, you can maybe dip into some of these more speculative issues here and there. But if you're trading IPOs, the volume is going to be a little lighter. They're going to be a little more speculative. And again, as I went into the course, there's some certain things you could do by looking at the volume on certain days to determine whether or not they have enough volume to trade. That's a good question, though. Uh, yes, webinar is recorded, and I will send out the list of setups that we found tonight, a list of IPOs that uh, are worth watching. And if you want uh, longer-term IPOs like the Tyler's we talked about, I could send you a, um, a bigger database on those. Or if you have Telechart, I can actually give you the formula so you can do it yourself. Okay. All right. Any questions? I'm going to quiet bunch tonight. I guess I did a good job. Oh, here we go. Okay. Michael's asking, when you buy in the pullback, do you wait for an up day or days? Absolutely. Okay. Let me show you real quick. Just like at a core methodology when we're trading these. Um, and again, download that free report on my website. But you want to, number one, have a strong trend. And you're looking for a pullback, okay, the market to pull back a little bit. And you look to enter if and only if it triggers. Now, you don't want to put your trigger like right here just in case it rallies a little bit. Because sometimes a market maker might push that market up uh, through a little manipulation trigger you in and then take you right back out what you want to do instead is you want to have your entry a little bit higher up and it amazes me and i often again there's there's a lot of if i say so myself there's a lot of good information on my youtube channel so uh please and oh by the way like this video while you're there if you don't mind uh, if you're watching it on youtube but go in and look at uh the videos that i do quite often the week in charts and talk about entries and I've probably got oh I don't know two dozen out there but again we use a little bit liberal entry just in case this market rallies up and then dies out you'd be surprised how many times you can miss a losing trade this is something hard to quantify but trust me if you miss a losing trade if you miss enough losing trade then the only thing left is the winners and it's vitally important and that's where the money and position management really comes in so yeah Michael you want to wait for that uh, trigger you want to wait for that price to begin to resume and uh, thoughts on CBYL all right maybe we pull that up CBYL CBYL okay well this one has has already kind of has like a compressed line die. It's already taken off and it's already come all the way back in. So in this particular case, what I would do is I would wait for a secondary signal. Okay. Uh, a brave, there's a brave, a brave thing to do would be to play this, this deep retrace It's something we talked a little bit about in the course, but without having the course, what I would recommend you do, uh, it's probably what I recommend you do if you had the course, but you, if you had the course, you, you'll see that it is uh, one of the patterns. But the best thing to do in this particular case, based on this particular issue, without going into a lot of details, would be to A, wait to see if it makes new highs in here, okay? And then if it does, then look to play the next pullback. So I would let this one uh, set up again, John, if I were you, as opposed, as opposed to trading one of those a little bit more advanced patterns, okay? 
All right, Michael wants to talk about some. Well, again, this is uh, kind of interesting because this one here, now I wouldn't actually uh, bought it because there's some criteria that it didn't meet, and I already know this because I've looked at it. Uh, but notice that you did have a shallow pullback in here. So, so far, this one's kind of triggered out of that shallow pullback. So, so far, so good on this one if you're already long, so stick with it. Uh, also, materials, I uh, wonder if that's uh, mining, probably so. And that's probably why it's doing so well. But it's only rallied four points. Here's the other thing you got to look at, too. you got to look at your scaling. So it's only up four points. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Dave, that's 20%. That's not much for an IPO. So what I would do in this particular case is I would wait to see if this stock can continue higher and then look to play the next pullback, okay? So there's some reasons why I wouldn't play this first breakout, which I'm not going to get into tonight. But this could certainly be a viable stock, and this is on my watch list. Uh, by the way. So yeah, uh, good eye for having that on your uh, watch list, but let it break out a little further. Let it follow through a little bit. Again, it's not that huge of a move yet. It came public around 20. It's only up about $4. That's not a whole lot for an IPO uh, price that high. Okay. Any other, any other questions? I guess while we're at an impasse as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Um, and I do answer my own email, so sometimes people are a little shy, I, even though I won't. Uh, nobody can see your name if you ask a question, by the way. Uh, but some pe sometimes people are a little shy in these things. So uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions on anything. Again, the code, just in case you forgot, IPO107, uh, DaveLander.com, trade IPOs, or you can go to the store on my website. You're welcome, Heather. Any more questions? I can hang around if you like. You're welcome, John. GSBD. Let's take a look at that. GSBD. Okay. Now, this is this is one I would not trade. Again, this is something that we get into a lot of details in the course. Goldman Sachs BDC. Um, I don't know what that is, but it's it's either an ETF or it's a something to do with Goldman Sachs, which is a big company. Uh, look at this, 1975 and 2225. Again, that's not a huge range, okay? Not a whole lot of excitement. Yes, there are a few patterns that set up here, okay? But I would not have taken this trade because, first of all, I like to find out what it is first, okay? In this particular case. But yeah, it's, it's, um, I would avoid that one just based on this price action. Now, if down the road this thing begins to rally, it puts it a serious rally, then look to play that first pullback. Okay. You speak of reimbursement, but in the same time, you disqualified those who would do that. Okay. Um, no, my point was that I've, I've only had one that got reimbursed, and it wasn't because the person said, oh, it wasn't what I thought it was. It's because that they, I knew they would, I knew they would go on in. It's like they just, I could tell. Okay. So, no, don't be don't be shy about um, don't worry about that. Nobody's gonna ask you any questions. In fact, I have somebody. I won't even see it. I'll, I'll be told that there were some reimbursements. I won't even know about it. the uh, The person that I've hired to to take care of these things, he's told that if somebody wants their money back, to click the button, give them their money back, and, and don't even bother me with it. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to make you feel. Don't don't worry about that. I won't even know if you return it. Okay. Now I just I just went around. now I just encourage people to return it. <laughs> now don't worry about that. No, there's no zero questions asked. I that I promise. Okay. Now, what do we have here? What did I just say? One, two, three, four, five days. So far, this thing has just died. Okay. So this would not be one that you want to trade. Okay. Yet. Now, in order for it to set up, uh, without giving away the whole course. It would have to take out this high here and then look to trade like the first pullback pattern we just talked about. Okay. Any more? <clears throat> How did you figure the IPO bull market would caught your attention? Yeah, I didn't want to get into that story because it's a, it's kind of a long one. But um, the short of it was when I was putting together my stock selection course in 2013, I was uh, showing some of my patterns and my setups. And when I got to the IPO part, I realized that most of the setups that I was showing were in IPOs over the past couple of years. I've always looked at IPOs, but I've never 
focused on them as much as I do now since I realize, you know, now it's like now I realize this is such a bull market there. I'm all over them. So, but what I did, when I got to the IPO section, I realized I had already used uh, a lot of the charts I was going to use from the IPOs. It just, it just, it was kind of like a light bulb went off. Like, wow, these stocks are, uh, are doing fantastic. And what's kind of interesting is that bull market has kind of waxed and waned a little bit. And now it's even fascinating that there's this huge demarcation. Some of them are going straight up and some are going straight down. Like this one, for instance, what is this, VIRT? So far, not so good for this one. But guess what? Let it go. It's like it's what I call the frozen trade. Let it go. Let it go. You're welcome, Richard. I guess you better people <laughs> complain, okay, if I uh, start saying it too much. But, yeah, and I've done a lot of research. I, I started researching IPOs many, many years ago. It was probably over 10 years ago, and I was uh, studying a lot of these uh, breakout type of patterns. And then, obviously, we had some, some bear markets in between, and uh, there just weren't a lot of IPOs coming out then. But the good thing is, let's say we have a bear market starts tomorrow. Like I said in the IPO course, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. And I, I give this silly story. I've got a neighbor across the street who's trying to sell his house. And the real estate agent said, hey, you don't have enough trees. Nobody's going to buy this house in the middle of the country with no trees. You live in the country. People want trees. So he planted about a 1,000 pine trees. And we laughed at him. Well, guess what? That was about 20 years ago. And those trees are huge right now. I can't even see his house. I'm looking at him right now. Uh, and, um, you know, so that was the best time to plant a tree. The point is, get this knowledge today. And if the bull market ends tomorrow, which I don't think it will, there's either going to be two things that are going to happen. One, there's still going to be flies and dies that are going to happen. Some new company will come public. With the way that technology is moving so fast today, it's so amazing the way the technology is moving. Some company is going to come public, and it's going to skyrocket. There will be a few of those, even if there is a bear market. But if there is a bear market, eh, what will happen is they'll pull in their horns a little bit. The underwriters will just sit and wait. And they'll actually time the market for you. So if you have this knowledge, when those stocks start coming public again and start skyrocketing, you'll be ready for it. Okay? Good questions today. Good questions. Y'all have me nervous for a second. Yes. Am I seeing a lot of setups these days? Yes. We just I just showed you some. The ones I just showed you are uh, some that I'm watching. Um, I like that FMSA as a toddler. Uh, Trill, T-R-I-L, is set up again. So, yeah, I'll uh, put those together, Richard, and uh, I'll send out an email tomorrow for everybody that was here and give you those uh, those stocks that are set up. Any other questions? As you can tell, I love doing these things. I love doing webinars. I'm always flattered when um, when people actually show up for them, so it's always uh, it's always exciting for me. What's the link? Oh, here it is, right here. DaveLander.com, trade IPOs, or you just go to my website and click on shop, and it's down towards the bottom. I'll show you that while I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions. Oh, you're welcome, Scott. You're welcome, Richard. Yeah, this is fun for me. And here's my website, DaveLander.com, and just go right here to shop, and if you scroll down, the IPO webinars right here, and then it should come up. Trade, yeah, trade IPOs, and I got a lot of information here. Here's some of the IPOs that we picked, just like we picked a few tonight. Okay, we'll see what they do. Uh, here's some of the ones that we picked in the uh, in the course, which was kind of fun to do. And again, I'm going to do a follow-up course, and we'll build the spreadsheet one more time. I'll show you how to build it. I'll teach you the patterns, and then hopefully a year from now we'll come back and redo it. Oh, by the way, one other thing, too. If you ever get a course from me, in addition to lifetime support, let's say next summer or even this summer, I decide to do another IPO course. If you've already bought one course, you can come to any IPO course that I ever do. Okay? Now, if it's uh, like an IPO section of a bigger course, then either you could come to that part free or I'll give you a discount on the entire course. I'll discount that part out. But if I do another dedicated IPO webinar, which I think I will, based on the excitement from, from this and, and the new patterns that I'm discovering as I go through these webinars and do these courses, 
um, I probably will. So if you do sign up, again, you'll get the next you'll get the next webinar that I do, which will be a paid webinar. You'll get to go to that free where we'll pick some stocks, just like the ones we picked on the screen I just showed you. And we will um, we'll look for some setups. And then, uh, again, and you'll have access to any other course that I do on IPOs free. You're welcome. Okay, anything else? Nate, I appreciate it, man. Nate's uh, Nate's got the course. Thanks for showing up, buddy. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, I'll give it a couple of more minutes. Anybody, any last-minute questions? Usually every time I go to shut it down, it's like one that comes in right at the last minute. All right, going once, going twice. Not tonight, huh? All right. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Any unanswered questions, Dave at DaveLandry.com. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Wrap my head nicely. Like the differential of enthusiasm and price arbiter concept. Oh, thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Good. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like I just want to make sure you guys are know where I'm coming from with these, and I just think it's a wonderful opportunity right now. Okay, again, thanks everybody for coming, and uh, everybody have a great night, and then uh, shoot me some emails if you have any questions. Thank you so much.